So the reason why I'm doing this video is because in 2019, I started losing my hair myself and I have never ever felt so insecure about myself. It got to a point where I would talk to this girl and she would talk to me back. And the only thing that I could think about was, is she currently just looking at my hairline? Is she currently watching my scalp? And it made me feel like shit. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video today, because you can fix your hair. Yeah, hair loss is very emotional for a lot of people and they're very self-conscious about it. So, you know, if you have hair loss, thinning, balding in the front, in work situations, social situations, you're very, it, it's, it's on your mind, it's on your head. You think people are looking at it. So it affects people significantly. So that's why if we can do something to thicken the hair, fill in the hair, add more hair, they make a very big difference aesthetically, um, socially and psychologically. You do not have to go bald. You do not have to ever face that feeling of insecurity that I felt myself. So first you need to understand why you are losing your hair. There could be many different reasons why you are losing your hair. First, is because you're deficient in minerals and vitamins. And the minerals and vitamins that you can be deficient that makes a big, big difference is if you are deficient in zinc, vitamin D, vitamin C, and biotin. Those are super, super important for hair growth and making sure that you're not thinning on top of your head. However, if you are like myself, and you have done your blood work and you know for a fact that you're not deficient in anything and you are hydrating, you're sleeping properly and not suffering from high levels of stress, then what you could be suffering from as well is male pattern baldness. I suffered from male pattern baldness. Very easy to know if you're suffering from male pattern baldness because the only thing that you do is that you have a look at your genes. You have a look at your dad, you also have a look at your grandfather on your mom's side, and then you will know what hairline you will receive. Yeah, so I do agree that it's really important to know what is causing the hair loss, uh, to know how to treat it. So I don't think that minerals and vitamin deficiency is really the main cause of hair loss. So that may be uh, an additional factor, but it's not going to be the main thing. Number one is a good diagnostic exam. So it's good to come in, be evaluated, uh, use a dermatoscope, evaluate the different regions of the scalp. Most common, androgenetic alopecia or male pattern balding is the cause of hair loss. And you see thinning hair, and that hair thins to a point where it eventually may fall out. So that's the most common cause of hair loss. Vitamin deficiency may add more to it. Stress may cause a shedding or what's called a telogen effluvium, but the genetic pattern is going to be the most common cause. Now, if it's unclear whether it's androgenetic alopecia, maybe there's a component of what's called scarring alopecia or autoimmune alopecia, then sometimes you do a biopsy of the scalp, and that gives you a lot of information, but a lot of times androgenetic or male pattern balding can be diagnosed just on exam. So male pattern baldness is because you are sensitive to a hormone called dehydrotestosterone or DHT. Now there's many ways to block DHT and in my personal experience you can block it the natural route or you can block it the unnatural route. And blocking it the unnatural route will give you the most amount of hair back or prevent hair loss the most. However, blocking it the natural route is going to give you the least amount of side effects. So there are side effects to any medication that you take. I have had side effects myself. What I found is that I tried the first unnatural route, which I should not have done. So first, always try the natural route. There are three products that you can utilize. One of them are natural and seems to work really, really well. And that is Saw Palamato. Now Saw Palamato, you take it at 320 milligrams. And the only thing that you need to know is blocks DHT. According to a lot of studies, according to myself as well, I got a lot of hair back on my head as soon as I started implementing Saw Palamato. 
However, you need to take Sao Palamato on a full stomach because if you do not take it, you can get some nasty side effects when it comes to gut and you can get a lot of pain for the stomach, which I experienced myself having to sit on the toilet for freaking four hours. Number two is going to be utilizing finasteride. I have utilized finasteride myself. And I found that even though I didn't get any of the super nasty side effect like uh, erectile dysfunction, I did get a decrease in mood and motivation. So I do not like finasteride so much. However, I still take it. And what I do is I actually only take 0.25 milligrams utilizing a tablet cutter. So the treatments for androgenetic alopecia are um, there's several of them. Now, one of the most common treatments is finasteride, or um, the finasteride is the generic of Propecia. What that does is it inhibits the 5-alpha reductase type 2 enzyme, which converts testosterone to DHT or dihydrotestosterone. Your follicles, hair follicles, have receptors for DHT and some people are genetically susceptible where they're more sensitive to DHT and that causes thinning and eventually hair loss. So DHT does have a strong component for male pattern balding. So if we can decrease the DHT, then that helps a lot. So what finasteride does is that it inhibits that conversion to decrease the DHT. Now there are some more natural uh, substances such as salt palmetto, which is what uh, this video discusses that may have a, an effect in blocking DHT as well. I don't think the natural remedies work as well as the prescription DHT, anti-DHT products like finasteride. Now, finasteride may have some slightly higher risk of side effects. I'm not gonna go into all the side effects here, but that's something that does need to be discussed with a physician before you start taking it because there are some side effects. It's not a high percentage, but it's something that needs to be discussed and you need to be aware of before you start using it. But finasteride does help. For most people, it helps at least stabilize. A lot of people we see thickening of their current hair and it is FDA approved. One of the other FDA approved medications is minoxidil, which is the generic of Rogaine. Uh, it could be applied topically. The oral minoxidil is now a very popular treatment. That is something that's off-label, but that also can be effective. There's also PRP, platelet-rich plasma injections, and that can also be effective as well in terms of concentrating your platelets, which have your growth factors, injecting them into your scalp, which can help to stabilize your hair and can help to thicken your hair. And that is a great way for you to get finasteride, block DHT, but don't get the nasty side effects that you can get. I did try the test ride as well in the freaking full dose and I have never felt so bad. So I don't recommend anyone to ever take the test ride. It's the strongest of them all and I do not recommend it whatsoever. What I personally do, is I take Sao Palamato every single day. Actually works as a testosterone booster as well. So that's pretty freaking amazing. Then I take 0 0.25 milligrams of finasteride four times a week. And that for me seems to work the best without getting any side effects whatsoever. Uh, I know for a fact that I can take 0 0.5 milligrams of finasteride but I don't see a big difference when it comes to how much hair I'm, I'm losing, taking 0 0.25 or taking 0 0.5 milligrams of finasteride. So I always want to take the lowest dose possible because that way I get less side effects and I don't know what this is going to do to myself, let's say in like freaking 10 years or so. So in terms of the dosing, the FDA approved prescribed dosage of finasteride is one milligram per day. Now, some people do take less than that if they think they may be experiencing some side effects. Sometimes they take less, sometimes that helps. There's no really great evidence as to what dosage less than one milligram you know, may be better or may be effective or may not cause the same degree of side effects. So different people may do different things, but the FDA approved prescription strength of finasteride is the one milligram per day dosage. But once again, this is something you would need to discuss with your physician before getting a prescription to make sure it's appropriate for you. Dutasteride is another similar medication as finasteride. It's what's called a non-selective 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, meaning that it doesn't just work 
in your scalp and in your prostate where finasteride may work, but it can work elsewhere in your body. So you may experience some slightly higher risks of side effects from the dutasteride. That's not FDA approved for hair loss. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. But if you actually want to regrow your hair, what I found is that I, you can utilize minoxidil. Minoxidil is very common. I utilize it every single night. I spray, take a little bit of minoxidil, rub it into my hair in the areas where I'm currently losing. So currently, for me, it's my temples, as you can see right here. I then use this. It's a scalp massager. Okay, I rub it in and I massage my scalp for 10 minutes and I do that every single night. One thing you can also utilize as well is microneedling. Okay, microneedling, however, you do not want to get a roller that says 0 0.5 milligrams. It will have a very hard time penetrating your scalp. So what you need to do is you need to get one, that's one millimeter, and then what you do, instead of rolling it through your head, what you actually do is that you point it in straight in that way you will not damage your hair follicles. That's where you use minoxidil, you use microneedling, a scalp massager, which I found this spongy looking thing, and it really, really works very, very well. I use that and I use it every single day. I do microneedling two times a week and that seems to work the best for myself to regrow my hair. So I discussed already about the minoxidil, it can work. The topical minoxidil can come in a solution or a foam, they both can be effective. The solution may be slightly more effective. The men's formulation is a 5% solution. The women's is a 2% solution. There's also a 5% foam that can be for either male or female. So minoxidil can be effective. Whether combining it with microneedling or massaging makes a difference or is improved, possibly. There may be some studies surrounding this, but I'm not sure it makes that big of a difference, but the minoxidil does, so that's something that can be effective. One way to actually get thicker hair is to utilize something called gelatin. Okay, gelatin works very, very well. I actually combined it. I found this product back in the day that had both gelatin and salt palomato. Gelatin will actually make your hair thicker, which is crazy, really, really good. But you need to also be aware of things that can make your hair worse. Okay, so number one is making sure that you're not smoking or drinking alcohol or consuming processed food. And also making sure that you are not showering your hair with water that has a lot of fluoride that really dries out your hair, damage all of the natural oils that you have for your hair. Okay, if you do that, it's going to be very hard, it creates a very unhealthy environment, your hair is going to be dry and you will not regrow your hair. So these are the things that I found that really works for myself. And here's a quick sum up of this video. So in terms of things to avoid, yes, smoking overall is not beneficial for your hair. Smoking can actually decrease the blood flow to your skin or to your scalp. Decreased blood flow may have an effect in, in causing more shedding and also, if you were to have a hair transplant, it may not heal as well. So smoking is overall not very good. In terms of the other things like processed foods or alcohol, I'm not sure that makes such a big difference. It's always good to eat well, take care of yourself, eat a well-balanced diet, fruits, vegetables, high protein. All that will give you the nutrition that you need as building blocks for your hair regeneration as you know your hair goes through its cycles and regrows having good nutrition is important you know in terms of hair health specifically there are some things that help your hair and there's things that are more det detrimental to your hair so it's good to try to avoid heat heat is can be damaging to your hair so hot blow dryers, hot flat irons, tension, things that provide a lot of tension on your hair, whether you, know, you braid your hair, you weave your hair, it's very in a tight hairstyle. Those things are detrimental. Over the summertime, if you go swimming, chlorine or salt water can be damaging. So sometimes people can wash their hair with fresh water before and after, before so the, the hair gets saturated and after to clear it out. So these are some things you can do to take care of your, your hair, uh, protect your scalp from the sun. All these things are important, but really comes down to what's the diagnosis, most common androgenetic or genetic pattern hair loss. 
or male pattern balding. What's the treatment options? We have finasteride, we have minoxidil, we have PRP, platelet-rich plasma injections. Those are some of the more common ones that can be effective. What other treatments? Well, there's medical treatments, there's also surgical treatments. There's hair transplant procedures. We specialize, we do robotic hair transplant procedures in my office, we do FUT, strip hair transplant procedures as well, and how best to take care of your hair both before and after and ongoing. All these are very important for a maintenance therapy to get the best possible hair and the longevity of your hair is really important because this is an ongoing process as you go through life. So hair loss and thinning doesn't just stop, it continues and it's how best do we manage it and how best do we tackle it and what do we do and what steps do we take and, and continue that going. And sometimes, you know, we start on one treatment, we add another, we add a third, we may do a hair transplant procedure as well, and then we continue them, we add on another medical treatment. So it's a process and being involved with your doctor every step of the way is really important. So this was a good vi overview video and there's a lot of information that can be gathered and there's a lot of information to know about and taking care of your hair is really important and you just have to be on top.